Meenakshi Temple, also referred to as Meenakshi Amman or Meenakshi Sundareshwara Temple, is a historic Hindu temple located on the southern bank of the Vigay River in the temple city of Madurai, Tamil Nadu, India. It is dedicated to Meenakshi, a form of Parvati, and her consort, Sundaraswar, a form of Shiva. The temple is at the center of the ancient temple city of Madurai mentioned in the Tamil Sangam literature, with the goddess temple mentioned in 6th century CE texts. Though the temple has historic roots, most of the present campus structure was rebuilt after the 14th century CE, further repaired, renovated and expanded in the 17th century by Thirumali Nayak. In early 14th century, the armies of Delhi Sultanate led by Muslim commander Malik Kafir plundered the temple, looted it of its valuables and destroyed the Madurai temple town along with many other temple towns of South India. The contemporary temple is the result of rebuilding efforts started by the Vijayanagara Empire rulers who rebuilt the core and reopened the temple. In the 16th century, the temple complex was further expanded and fortified by the Nayak ruler Vishwanatha Nayaka and later others. The restored complex now houses 14 Gopurams, ranging from 45-50 m in height, with the southern Gopura tallest at 51.9 meters. The complex has numerous sculpted pillared halls such as Arakal, Kilakundu Mandapam, Golu Mandapam and Pudu Mandapam. Its shrines are dedicated to Hindu deities and Shaivism scholars, with the Viminus above the Garbhagrihas of Meenakshi and Sundaresvara gilded with gold. The temple is a major pilgrimage destination within the Shaivism tradition, dedicated to Meenakshi Devi and Shiva. However, the temple includes Vishnu in many narratives, sculptures and rituals as he is considered to be Meenakshi's brother. This has made this temple and Madurai as the southern Mathura, one included in Vaishnava texts. The Meenakshi temple also includes Lakshmi, flute playing Krishna, Rukmini, Brahma, Saraswati, other Vedic and Puranic deities, as well as artwork showing narratives from major Hindu texts. The large temple complex is the most prominent landmark in Madurai and attracts tens of thousands visitors a day. The temple attracts over a million pilgrims and visitors during the annual 10-day Meenakshi Tarukalayanam festival, celebrated with much festivities and a Ratha procession during the Tamil month of Chittare. The temple has been adjudged best swatch iconic place in India as on the 1st of October. 2017 under Prime Minister of India Narendra Modi's flagship Swatch Bharat Abhiyan. Location, the Meenakshi Temple is located in the heart of historic Madurai city, about a kilometre south of the Vigay River. It is about 460 kilometres southwest from Chennai, the state capital. The temple complex is well connected with road network near a major railway junction and an airport with daily services. The city roads radiate from the temple complex and major ring roads form a concentric pattern for the city, a structure that follows the Silpa Sastra guidelines for a city design. Etymology and mythology Meenakshi is a form of the Hindu goddess Parvati, the consort of Shiva. The Meenakshi temple at Madurai is one of the major Hindu temples dedicated to her. The Tamil spelling Meenachi means rule of the fish, derived from the Tamil words Meen and Achi. An alternate etymology derives the name Meenakshi from Tamil word Meen and Sanskrit word Akshi, thus translated as fish-eyed or a goddess who has eyes contoured like a fish. The goddess Meenakshi is the principal deity of the temple, unlike most Shiva temples in South India where Shiva is the principal deity. According to a legend found in the Tamil text Tiruvalayata Puranam, King Mali Adwaja Pandaya and his wife Kanchanamali performed a yajna seeking a son for succession. Instead a daughter is born who is already three year old and has three breasts. Shiva intervenes and says that the parents should treat her like a son, and when she meets her husband, she will lose the third breast. They follow the advice. The girl grows up, the king crowns her as the successor and when she meets Shiva, his words come true, she takes her true form of Meenakshi. According to Harman, 
This may reflect the matrilineal traditions in South India and the regional belief that penultimate powers rest with the women, gods listen to their spouse, and that the fate of kingdoms rest with the women. According to Susan Bailey, the reverence for Meenakshi is a part of the Hindu goddess tradition that integrates with the Dravidian Hindu society where the woman is the linchpin of the system of social relationships. The marriage of Meenakshi and Shiva was the biggest event, with all gods, goddesses and living beings gathered. Vishnu, the center of Vaishnavism tradition of Hinduism, is the brother of Meenakshi. Vishnu gives her away to Shiva at the wedding. Following the tradition, every evening, before closing the temple, a ritual procession led by drummers and a brass ensemble carries the image of Sundareswara to Meenakshi's bedroom, and every morning she is brought back to the sanctum. The wedding is celebrated annually as Chithiri Thiruvisha in Madurai, a festival tradition believed to have started with King Thirumali Nayakar. History, the town of Madurai is ancient and one mentioned in Sangam era texts. These are dated to be from the 1st to 4th century CE. Some early Tamil texts call Madurai as Kudal, and these portray it as a capital and a temple town where every street radiated from the temple. Goddess Meenakshi is described as the divine ruler, who along with Shiva were the primary deities that the southern Tamil kingdoms such as the Pandyan dynasty revered. The early texts imply that a temple existed in Madurai by the mid-6th century. In medieval literature and inscriptions, it is sometimes referred to as Kadambavanam or Velumbalam. It was described to be the Sangam of scholars, or a place where scholars meet. It is mentioned in the Tamil text Tiruvalayadal Puranam and the Sanskrit text Halasaya Mahatmaya. Early Tamil texts mention the temple and its primary deity by various epithets and names. Thirugnana Sambandar, the famous Hindu saint of Seva philosophy for example, mentioned this temple in the 7th century, and described the deity as Alavi Iraven. The origin of the temple is mentioned in these early Tamil texts, some in the regional Puranam genre of literature. All of these place the temple in ancient times and include a warrior goddess, but the details vary significantly and are inconsistent with each other. Some link to it deities they call Alavi Iraven and Alavi Inal, or alternatively Angi or Kani Ami. Some link its legend to other deities such as Indra who proclaims the primacy of the goddess, while some describe Hindu gods appearing before ancient kings or saints urging wealthy merchants to build this temple in the honor of a goddess. One legend describes a childless king and queen performing yajna for a son, they get a daughter who inherits the kingdom, conquers the earth, meets Shiva ultimately, marries him, continues to rule from Madurai and the temple memorializes those times. Instead of such inconsistent ahistorical mythologies, scholars have attempted to determine the history of the temple from inscriptions found in and outside Madurai, as well as comparing the records relating to South Indian dynasties. These largely post-date the 12th century. Invasions and destruction, in the north, the Indian subcontinent had been conquered by the Delhi Sultanate. Muslim armies had begun raiding central India for plunder by late 13th century. Between 1310-1311, the Ala Abdin Khilji's Muslim general Malik Kafir and his Delhi Sultanate forces went deeper into the Indian peninsula for loot and to establish annual tribute paying Muslim governors. The records left by the court historians of the Delhi Sultanate state that Malik Kafir raided Madurai, Chidambaram, Srirangam and other Tamil towns, destroyed the temples, and they were the sources of gold and jewels booty he brought back to Delhi. The Islamic invasion in the 14th century, states George Mitchell, a professor and art historian of Indian architecture, brought an abrupt end to the patronage of Tamil Hindu temple towns. The Tamil Hindus revived these towns but in some places such as Madurai, it took a long while. After the conquest and destruction, the Delhi Sultan appointed a Muslim governor in Madurai, who seceded within the few years from the Delhi Sultanate and began the Madurai Sultanate. This Sultanate sought tribute from the temple towns, instead of supporting them. 
the Muslim Madari Sultanate was relatively short-lived, with Hindu Vijayanagar Empire removing it in late 14th century. According to one poetic legend called Madhura Vijayam attributed to Ganga Devi, the wife of Kumara Kampana, she gave him a sword, urged him to liberate Madari, right the vast wrongs, and reopen the Meenakshi temple out of its ruins. The Vijayanagara rulers succeeded, removed the ruins and reopened the temple for active worship. They restored, repaired and expanded the temple through the 16th century, along with many other regional temples. Rebuilding, the temple was rebuilt by the Hindu Nayaka dynasty ruler Vishwanatha Nayaka in the 16th and 17th century. According to Susan Lewandowski, the Nayaka rulers followed the Hindu texts on architecture called the Silpa Shastras in redesigning the temple city plan and the Meenakshi temple. The city was laid out, states Lewandowski, in the shape of concentric squares and ring roads around them, with radiating streets culminating in the Meenakshi Sundaresvara temple. These streets used traditional Tamil Hindu month names, such as Adhi, Chitri, Avani Mula, Masi and others. In each of these months, the Hindus started their tradition of taking the temple bronzes festively through the street of the same name. The temple and the city was once again east facing to greet the rising Surya. The temple city grew again around the new temple, with human settlements structured along their castes, according to Lewandowski, with the royalty, Kshatriyas and Vaishya merchants lived on the southeast side of the temple. The Brahmins in a special quarter close to the temple, while others in other areas and fringes of the city. The king started a procession tradition linked to the temple to link his authority with the divine and maintain the social system. In contrast, according to Bailey, the procession reflects the traditional matrilineal social values, the brother-sister groom kinship values that better explain its popularity. The warrior goddess worship tradition is ancient in the Tamil Hindu tradition, states Bailey, and it dramatically expanded after the 14th century wars. The work completed by Vishwanatha Nayaka in 1560 was substantially expanded to the current structure during the reign of Thirumali Nayak. Thirumali Nayak, a Telugu origin Hindu king, took considerable interest in erecting many complexes inside the temple. His major contributions are the Vasantha Mandapam for celebrating Vasan Forsavam and Kilakundu Mandapam. The corridors of the temple tank and Meenachi Nayakar Mandapam were built by Rani Mangamal. The initiative for some changes to the structure was under the supervision of Ariyanatha Mudalyar, the prime minister of the Nayaka dynasty. During the colonial era, the population around the Meenakshi temple attracted a hub of Christian missionary activity headed by competing missions from Portugal and other parts of Europe. The British rulers first gave endowments to the temple and the British troops participated in temple festivities to gain socio-political acceptance. Lord Clive, for example, donated jewels looted by the East India Company from Sringapatam, but in 1820 they withdrew you from their roles as temple patrons and participating in temple festivities. The missionaries ridiculed the temple artwork and criticized the temple practices while introducing themselves as Roman Brahmins and Northern Sinaiticus. The missionary efforts were largely unsuccessful with people continuing to patronize the temple after baptizing. The missionaries wrote back that the Tamils were baptizing, but not converting, for they baptize if someone wants a wife who is Christian or medical aid when they have a disease, material aid if they are poor. After the end of the Nayakas, start of the Madras presidency and withdrawal of the colonial British from support, the temple condition degraded. In 1959, Tamil Hindus began collecting donations and initiated restoration work in consultation with engineers, Hindu monasteries, historians and other scholars. The completed restoration was celebrated with the Kumbhad Hishikam in 1995. The temple is sometimes spelled as Minaxi and the city as Madara in 17th to early 20th century texts. 
The temple has its traditional version of history that it calls Shiva Lilas, and 64 of these episodes are painted as murals around the temple walls. These depict the many destructions of Madari and the temple, then its rise from the ashes and ruins of the destruction every time. Description The temple complex is the center of the old city of Madari. It consists of monuments inside a number of concentric enclosures, each layer fortified with high masonry walls. The outer walls have four towering gateways, allowing devotees and pilgrims to enter the complex from all four directions. After the city's destruction in the 14th century, the Tamil tradition states that the king Vishwantha Nayaka rebuilt the temple and the Madurai city around it in accordance with the principles laid down in the Shilpa Shastras and streets accommodate an elaborate festival calendar in which processions circumambulate the temple complex. The vehicles used in the processions are progressively more massive the further they travel from the center. The temple complex is spread over about 14 acres. The courtyard is close to a square with each side of about 800 feet, but more accurately a rectangle with one side about 50 feet longer. The complex has numerous shrines and mandapas, of which the most important and largest are the two parallel shrines in the innermost courtyard, one for Meenakshi and other for Sundareshvara. Additionally, the complex has a golden lotus sacred pool for pilgrims to bathe in, a thousand pillar hall chol tree with extensive sculpture, the Kalayana Mandapa or wedding hall, many small shrines for Hindu deities and for scholars from the Sangam history, buildings which are religious schools and administrative offices, elephant sheds, equipment sheds such as those for holding the chariots used for periodic processions and some gardens. The temple is embedded inside a commercial hub and traditional markets. According to Holly Reynolds, a closer examination of the temple plan, as well as the old city, suggests that it is mandala, a cosmic diagram laid out based on principles of symmetry and loci. The temple complex has had a living history, has been in use for almost all of its history except for about 60 years when it was closed and in ruins after its destruction in the 14th century. The temple has continued to evolve in the modern era. For example, before the colonial era, the temple complex was itself inside another layer of old city's fortified walls. The British demolished this layer of fortification in the early 19th century. The surviving plan of the temple complex places it within the old city, one defined by a set of concentric squares around the temple walls. The ancient temple complex was open. The courtyard walls were added over time in response to invasion and the plunder of the temple complex. According to the text Thirupanimali, the Vijayanagara commander Kumara Kampana after completing his conquest of Madari, rebuilt the pre-existing structure and built defensive walls around the temple in the 14th century. Lakana Nayaka added the defensive walls around the first Prakara, as well as expanded and renovated the Mahamandapa and Meenakshi shrine about the middle of the 15th century. After the destruction of the Hindu Vijayanagara Empire in late 16th century by a coalition of Islamic Deccan Sultanates north of Karnataka, the Madari region declared its sovereignty. Visvanatha Nayak then poured resources to heavily fortify the temple complex, set a new plan for the temple complex. The Nayaka ruler also gilded the Vimana of the primary shrines with gold. Chechiapa Nayaka rebuilt the Dvarapala Mandapam in front of the Sanadhi Gopuram, as well as the north colonnade of the Golden Lotus Tank, the second protective wall around the Meenakshi Devi Shrine. Gopurams, the shrines of Meenakshi Temple are embedded inside three wild enclosures and each of these have four gateways, the outer tower growing larger and reaching higher to the corresponding inner one. The temple has 14 Gopurams, the tallest of which is Southern Tower, rises to over 170 feet and was rebuilt in late 16th century. The oldest Gopuram is the eastern one, built by Merivarman Sundara Pandayan during 1216-1238. Each Gopuram is a multi-storied structure, covered with sculpture painted in bright hues. 
the outer gopurams or high pyramidal tower serving as a landmark sign for arriving pilgrims, while the inner gopuram are smaller and serve as the entrance gateways to various shrines. The temple complex has four nine-story gopurams, one seven-story gopuram, five five-story gopurams, two three-story, and two one-story gold gilded sanctum towers. Of these five are gateways to the Sundareshvara Shrine, three to the Meenakshi Shrine. The towers are covered with stucco images, some of whom are deity figures and others are figures from Hindu mythology, saints or scholars. Each group or sets of panels in each story present an episode from regional or pan-Hindu legend. The four tallest gopurams on the outer walls alone depict nearly 4,000 mythological stories. Some of the major gopurams of the Meenakshi temple complex are portions of the three-storied gopura at the entrance of Sundareswara shrine and the central portion of the goddess Meenakshi shrine are some of the earliest surviving parts of the temple. These were constructed by King Kulasekara Pandaya. The traditional texts call him a poet Saint King, additionally credit him with the poem called Ambike Malay as well as shrines each for Nataraja and Suraya near the main temple, Ayana in the east, Vinayagar in the south, Kiriyamal Purumal in the west and Kali in the north. He also built a Mahamandapam. Kulasekara Pandaya was also a poet and he composed a poem on Meenakshi named Ambike Malay. Meravarman Sundara Pandaya and I built a Gopura in 1231, then called Avanavendaraman, later Rabult, expanded and named as Sundara Pandaya Thirakopuram. Chitra Gopuram, also known as Matalakam Vale, was built by Meravarman Sundara Pandayan II. This Gopuram is named after the frescoes and reliefs that depict secular and religious themes of Hindu culture. Meravarman Sundara Pandayan II also added a pillared corridor to the Sundareswara Shrine, and the Sundara Pandayan Mandapam. It was rebuilt after the 14th century damage. Its granite structure was renovated by Kumara Krishnapur after 1595. Vembachurara Ananda Nambi built the early version of the three-tiered Gopuram in 1227. Like other Gopurams, it too was destroyed in the 14th century and later rebuilt. This Gopuram is found between Meenakshi Shrine and the Kilakutu Mandapam. Some inscriptions refer to it as Vembathura Gopuram. The Gopuram east to the Sundareshwara Shrine is five-storied. It was completed about 1372 by Vasuvapan after the Vijayanagara rulers reopened the temple complex after remaining in ruins and dormant for about five decades. The Gopuram west to the Sundareshwara Shrine is also five-storied, and was completed around 1374 by Malapan. According to the inscriptions found on the foundation of the gateways, Visvapa Nayaka built the Nayaka Gopuram in the second Prakara around 1530, while Palahi Gopuram was built about the same time by Malapan. Both the Gopuram have similar style and architecture, likely built by a collaborating group of same artists. Kadaka Gopuram in Meenakshi's shrine was built by Tumpachi Nayaka around the mid-16th century, but different texts give different dates. It is five-storied, was walled up and closed through 1963 for unclear reasons. This Gopura was reopened after the renovations completed in 1963. The Gopuram near the Ganesha Shrine, also called the Nadakatu Gopuram or Idekatu Gopuram, was built by the Saramali Sivanthimurti Chetty family. It is called Nadakatu because it is between the shrines of Meenakshi and Sundareswara. They also rebuilt and renovated the Idadhakuri Gopuram, a five-story tower on the northern segment of the Adi Street. The nine-story southern Gopura, the highest tower, was also built by Saramali Sivanthimurti Chetty family, a wealthy Hindu who lived near Thiruchirappalli. It was completed in the second half of 16th century. The Gopuram is notable for its extensive artwork with over 1,500 mythological characters in panels that narrate legends from the Hindu texts, particularly the Puranas. 
Mote Gopuram was started by Krishna Panayakar, also called the North Raya Gopuram. It was completed by Amaravati Pura Vayanagaram Chatiyar family in 1878 CE. The Mote Gopuram for nearly three centuries did not have the roof structure, is simpler and has fewer stucco images than the other major entrances, giving it a relatively bold appearance and the local name. Before its completion in the 19th century, the Gopuram made of stone and brick had even fewer stucco images. Shrines The Meenakshi temple has two separate shrines for the goddess Meenakshi and god Sundaresvara, just like most Shaiva temples. Both open to the east. The Devi shrine is on the south side, while the Deva shrine is more centrally placed, to the north thus placing the goddess as the Pradhana Murti or the more important right side within the complex, states Fuller. The goddess shrine has the green stone image of Meenakshi, standing in bent leg posture. Her raised hand holds a lotus, on which sits a green parrot. Her left hand hangs by her side. This image is set in a square guard Hagriya. A copy of this image has been made from metal and is kept in the temple complex. The metal version is used for a festive procession. A distinct feature of Meenakshi in terms of iconography is the presence of Parrot in her right hand. The Sundareswara shrine has a stone linga in its square plan sanctum, and this anakin is shaded under a stone cobra hood. In the northeast corner is another stone image of his consort. None of these travel during a festive procession. Rather, Sundareswara is represented in the form of anthropomorphic Somaskanda image. There is another metal symbolic image of Shiva called the Cocker, which is merely a pair of embossed feet on a metal stool. This symbol is kept near Sundareswara sanctum all day, then carried in a palaki daily to Meenakshi's chamber every evening so that the two can symbolically spend the night together. In the morning, the temple volunteers wake the divine couple and the symbolic cocker image is carried back to the Sundareswara sanctum. The shrine for Sundareswara is the largest within the complex and its entrance is aligned with the eastern Gopuram. The shrine for Meenakshi is smaller, though theologically more important. Both the Meenakshi and Sundareswara shrines have gold-plated viminum. The golden top can be seen from a great distance in the west through the apertures of two successive towers. The tall sculpture of Ganesh carved of single stone located outside the Sundareswara shrine in the path from Meenashi shrine is called the Mukiruni Vinayakar. A large measure of rice measuring three kurini is shaped into a big bowl of sacrifice and hence the Ganesh is called Makarni Vinayagar. Kumara Kampana, states the Thirupanimali text, donated jewels and made grunts to cover the expenses for daily operations of the two shrines in the 14th century. The Tamil Hindus who had hidden the temple idols in Nanjal Nadu, brought them back and reconsecrated them ending the nearly five decades era when the temple had been closed under the Madari Sultanate rule. The temple inscriptions suggest that the Vijayanagara rulers participated worship ceremonies in the temple and donated gold through the 16th century. Lakana Nayaka built the Paleri in mid-15th century for the icon goddess and god to symbolically spend their night together. The Nataraja shrine was also added in the 15th century by Arulalan Sevahadavan Vanathirian, who also renovated the Thiruvalavodaya shrine. The temple has other shrines, such as for Murugan in the northwest corner of the second courtyard. It was built by Krishna Panayakar II, a tall, monolithic Ganesha sculpture with the large rice ball, locally called the Mukiruni Vinayakar, is carved on the way between the Meenakshi shrine and the Sundareshwara shrine, reflecting the legend that gave him the elephant head. Temple tank and surrounding portico, the Nayakas, who were the local governors for the Vijayanagara rulers, expanded the temple complex. In 1516, Saluvana Rasana Nayaka added the sacred pool for pilgrims to take a dip, naming it as Hukadal. Chechiapa Nayaka rebuilt the north colonnade of the Golden Lotus Tank, as well as Dvarapala Mandapam in front of the Sanadhi Gopuram. The sacred temple tank is called Porthamari Kulam. It is also referred to as Adhi Thirtham, Sivaganga and Uthama Thirtham. 
The pool is 165 feet by 120 feet in size. The pool walls were painted with frescoes. Only a fraction of 17th and 18th century paintings of Nayak period survives and one such portion is found in the small portico on the western side of the tank. It depicts the marriage of Sundareswara and Meenkashi attended by Vijayaranga Chakanatha and Rani Mangamal. The painting is executed on a vivid red background, with delicate black York and large areas of white, green and ochre. The celestial couple is seated inside an architectural frame with a flowering tree in the background. The small six-pillared swing mandapam was built by Chavanthi Murthy Chetty during this period, and this remains in use currently for a Friday ritual and it also houses the model of the entire temple complex created in 1985. Halls The temple complex has many mandapas built by kings and wealthy patrons over the centuries. They are Choltri, or a place for the pilgrims to rest. Some of these mandapas include 1. Main Mandapams Chinapa Nayaka constructed the 100-pillared Mandapa Nayaka Mandapam in the northeastern part of Second Courtyard in 1526. This Mandapa houses the famed Nataraja statue with his right leg up in dance mudra, instead of the left leg typically found in Nataraja bronzes. The small six-pillared swing Mandapam was built by Chavanthi Murthy Chetty during this period, and this remains in use currently for a Friday ritual. The images of Meenakshi and Sundareswara are placed on the swing every Friday evening and swung. The shrine has a three-story gopuram flanked by two dvarapala and supported by golden, rectangular columns that bear lotus markings. Along the perimeter of the chamber, granite panels of the divine couple are present. The hall is situated in the western bank of the temple tank. This mandapam also houses the model of the entire temple complex created in 1985. Kambathadi mandapam was built by Krishna Virapa Nayakar. This Choltri hall is known for intricately carved sculptures and eight Shiva forms, Ardhanarishwara, Rudra, Bhikshadhanamurti, Dakshinamurti, Lingobhava, Ikapathamurti, Rishabha, Somaskanda, Chandra Sekara, Nataraja and Somasundara. Ashta Shakti Mandapam was built by two queens. It is the hall near the East Gopuram, between the main entrance for visitors and the smaller Gopuram leading to the Meenakshi Shrine Tower. The passage was named for eight forms of goddess Shakti carved on its pillars, Kaumari, Raudri, Vaishnavi, Mahalakshmi, Yagnarupini, Shyamala, Maheswari and Manonmani. These reflect the feminine and power aspects of all major traditions of Hinduism. Other sculptures and paintings depict the Tiruvalayadal. The sculptures of heroes of Mahabharata, the Pancha Pandavas can be seen in the Pancha Pandava Mandapam. The hall also has four sculptures of Shiva scholars, as well as a statue of Mahatma Gandhi added in 1923 while the Indians were amidst their independence struggle from the colonial British rule. Kilakundu Mandapam, also called Sangali Mandapam, is near the Meenakshi Shrine. The word Kilakundu means parrot cage, and in past the parrots kept here were trained to say Meenakshi. This pillared hall was completed in 1623 by Muthu Virapa Nayakar. The cages were later removed. In contemporary times, girls perform the Kalatam dance, a type of stick dance that involves acrobatics and forming chains with long ropes hanging from the ceiling, which is why it is called Sangali. These dances celebrate Hindu festival days. The Kilakundu Mandapam is notable for its sculpture of characters from the Mahabharata, a Hindu epic. It also has a Yali sculpture on a pillar, inside whose mouth is carved a stone ball that freely rotates. The Kambatadi Mandapam with its seated Nandi has various manifestations of Shiva carved and also contains the famous marriage of Meenakshi sculpture. Other sculptures here include those Shiva and Kali in a dance competition, a golden flagstaff, Durga as Siddhar. The Vira Vasanthareya Mandapam is to the south of the 1000-pillar Mandapam, 
and was completed in 1611 by Mathuvirapa Nayakarai. It contains a Nandi facing the main Sundaresvara Sanctum. To the south of this hall is the Kalayana Mandapam, or Wedding Hall. It is here that the marriage of Shiva and Parvati is celebrated every year during the Chithiri festival which falls sometime in or about April. Pudu Mandapam, also called Vasantha Mandapam was completed by Thirumali Nayak in the 17th century. It is in front of the Eastern Tower, outside the current wild complex. It led to the unfinished Eastern Gopuram. It has 124 pillars, each with intricately carved sculptures of Meenakshi's wedding to Shiva, Kali, Nataraja, Suraya, Chandra as well as common life scenes such as elephants eating sugarcane stalks are found in this mandapam. Its popularity led to shopkeepers occupying the pillared hall, some of which hide or make a complete view of the sculpture difficult. Bolu Mandapam was built by Thityayapa Chetty, a common man, in 1565 during the rule of Krishnapa Nayakar. This Mandapam is used during the Navaratri festival every year when goddess Meenakshi is decorated like a Bolu doll, in nine different forms on each of the nine days of the autumn festival. The Thousand Pillar Hall contains 985 carved pillars, with two shrines occupying the space of the remaining 15. The hall was built by Ariyanatha Mudalia in 1569 and blends engineering skill and artistic vision. Ariyanatha Mudalia was Prime Minister and General of Viswanatha Nayaka, the first Nayaka of Madurai. At the entrance of the hall is the statue of Ariyanatha Mudalia seated on a horseback, flanking one side of the entrance to the temple. Each pillar in the hall is a carved sculpture. The more prominent among the carved figures are those of Rati, Karthikya, Ganesha, Shiva as a wandering mendicant. The Meenakshi Nayaka Mandapam has two rows of pillars carved with images of Yali. It is situated to the north of Sundareswarar Flagstaff Hall. There is a temple art museum in the hall where icons, photographs, drawings, and other exhibits of the temple are displayed. Just outside this hall, towards the west, are the musical pillars. Each pillar, when struck, produces a different musical note. Two other mandapams, Lakana Nayaka expanded and renovated the Mahamandapa in late 15th century. The work of Anayanar Mandapa and the small six-pillared Mandapa in front of the Mahamandapa was rebuilt by Sundara Tuladeya Mavali Vanathiriya in the 15th century. Chechiapa Nayaka rebuilt the Dvarapala Mandapam in front of the Sanadhi Gopuram, as well as the north colonnade of the Golden Lotus Tank in the late 16th century. Vaniyadi Natarajar Mandapam and Anakuli Mandapam were built by a woman named Chelapan Manikam in late 16th century. Murthyayaman Mandapam and Nandi Mandapam were built by Krishnapa Nayakar. The Nandi Mandapam was renovated again in 1877. The Mudali Pili Mandapam or Iratu Mandapam is a wide and long hall built by Muthu Pili during 1613. On the pillars of the halls, there are fine sculptures of Shiva narrating the legend of Bhikshudanar. The Mangayar Kerasi Mandapam is a newly built hall situated opposite to the wedding halls and bears the name of Queen Mangayar Kerasi who contributed to Saivism and Tamil language. To the south of Mangayar Kerasi Mandapam lies the Savekara Mandapam, a hall built by Marudu brothers in 1795. The Nagara Mandapam lies opposite to Sundareswara shrine was built by Acharya, the minister of Rani Mangamal in 1635. The Kalu Mandapam is a hall for displaying dolls during the Navaratri festival celebrated during September-October. This hall is situated in the second corridor of the Meenakshi Shrine at the western side. The Mandapas also feature community gathering halls. The Kanaka Sadha and Ratna Sadha are in the first Prahara, Rajata Sadha in Velyambalam, Deva Sadha in the 100 pillar Mandapam and Chitra Sadha in the 1000 pillar Mandapam. Significance the Meenakshi Temple is a theologically and culturally significant temple for Tamil Hindus. It, states Christopher Fuller, signifies through the wedding of Meenakshi and Sundaresvara the supremely important rite of passage for women. 
the cultural concept of sumangali or auspicious married woman who lives with her husband but is also independent, organizer of the social connections and who is central to Tamilian life. The marriage of the goddess and god is symbolic paradigm for the human marriage. This event is commemorated with an annual festive procession that falls sometime around April. The temple is also significant because it implies an affinal, protective relationship between Shaivism and Vaishnavism traditions of Hinduism, by making Shiva the husband of Meenakshi, and Vishnu her brother. A significant relationship in Dravidian kinship system, Meenakshi herself is a central part of the Shaktism tradition of Hinduism, and represented as the dominant figure of the pair in this temple. The temple thus symbolically celebrates all three of its major traditions. According to the Tiruvalayatal Puranam, of the list of 68 pilgrimage places in Shaivism, four are most important, Kashi, Chidambaram, Tirukalati and Madurai. The sacrality of Madurai is from this temple. The shrine of Sundareswara is considered as one of the Pancha Sadhi, where the Tamil Hindu tradition believes Shiva performed cosmic dance. The Tamil word Veli means silver and Ambalam means stige or altar. This massive Nataraja sculpture is enclosed in a huge silver altar and hence called Veli Ambalam. The temple is a popular site for Hindu weddings, though it is not the exclusive site. The short main ceremony is completed in the temple, followed by receptions and other rituals elsewhere. The Meenakshi temple is not only a religious center, but is also an economic center. The goods and services for temple-related pilgrims and visitors is a significant part of the Madari economy. Worship The Meenakshi Amman temple is an active house of Hindu worship. Priests perform the puja ceremonies on a daily basis and during festivals. Volunteers and temple staff also participate in daily rituals, such as symbolically moving an icon of Sundaresvara in a palanquin to Meenakshi's chamber every night so that they can be together, then waking the two and returning Sundaresvara to his shrine every morning. There are periodic Ratha processions where one of the metal copy icon of the goddess is taken out of the temple in an elaborate car shrine decorated with colorful clothes and flowers with volunteers pulling the car through the streets of Madurai and circumambulating the temple complex on one of the concentric roads in the old city. This symbolizes her mythical conquests and her presence in the secular life of the people. The temple has a six-time puja calendar every day, each comprising four rituals namely Abhishika, Alangaram, Nivethanam and Deepa Iradhanae for both Meenakshi and Sundareswara. The rituals and festivals are accompanied with music with Nadhaswaram and Taval, recitation of the Vedas. The Hindus generally circumambulate the shrines clockwise first before entering the shrine for a darshana. Meenakshi is typically visited before Sundareswara by the pilgrims, she considered the primary deity of the complex. Like most Shakti temples in Tamil Nadu, the Fridays during the Tamil months of Adi and Thai are celebrated in the temple by thousands of devotees. Avani Mula Utsavam is a 10-day festival mainly devoted to Sundareswara describes his various Thiruvalayadal meaning Shiva's sacred games. Festivals The Meenakshi temple hosts a festival in each month of the Tamil calendar. Some festivals attract significant participation, with the Meenakshi wedding-related festival attracting over a million people over 12 days. It is called the Meenakshi Thirukalayanam. The festival is celebrated in the Chithiri month, which typically falls about April. It marks the divine marriage of Meenakshi, and is the most attended festival. The wedding of the divine couple is regarded as a classic instance of South Indian marriage with matrilineal emphasis, an arrangement referred as Madurai marriage. This contrasts with the Chidambaram marriage, with patrilineal emphasis, reflected by Shiva's dominance, ritual and mythology at the Shiva temple of Chidhambaram. The festival includes a procession, where Meenakshi and Sundareshwara travel in a chariot pulled by volunteer devotees, and Vishnu gives away his sister in marriage to Shiva. Meenakshi, the bride, is the royal monarch. During the one-month period, there are a number of events including the Thiruvizha and Thepa Thiruvizha, 
Other festivals include the Vasantham festival is celebrated in vacancy month. The Anjal festival in Ani, the Muli Kotu festival in Adi, the Avani Mulam Avani, the Kalatam festivals of Apasi and Karthike months, the Iradra Darsan festival of Margali month, the Thai month Atsavam that co celebrated with the Mariyaman temple in Madurai, the Masi Atsavam and Vasantham Atsavam in Panguni. In the Tamil month of Puratasi, the temple celebrates the Navaratri festival, also known as Dasara or Dasara elsewhere. During this autumn festival, the temple complex is lit up at night with garlands of lights and with colorful displays during the day. The Mandapam halls display mythological scenes from Hindu texts using Bolu dolls. These displays are particularly popular with children, and families visit the displays in large numbers. Literary mention, over the centuries, the temple has been a center of education of culture, literature, art, music and dance. The temple is famed location where Tamil tradition believes Kampanter helped establish Tamil Shiva Bhakti. Kumara Gurupara, a 17th century Tamil poet, composed Meenakshi Palatamal in praise of presiding deity of this temple. King Tarumali Nayak's patronage of the poet Kumara Gurupara has an important place in the history of Palatamal. Kumara Gurupara visited a lot of temples and when he visited this temple, he composed Meenakshi Palatamal dedicated to the goddess Meenakshi.